Recently, my venerable and sonic mirage began suffering the symptoms of a failing floppy drive. I decided to use this as a reason to replace it with an HXC floppy drive emulator. However, while it is claimed on the HXC website that the emulator is fully compatible with the Mirage, there isn't much in the way of installation instructions specific to the machine. Only a few videos on YouTube of the sampler booting with the emulator installed. These are usually accompanied with a thumbs up or some other affirmation, but no audio demonstration to actually prove anything has been loaded. As such, I decided to make this series of videos detailing my experience with the mod, as well as instructions on how to install the emulator and create your own images for it. Unfortunately, my camera was inoperative during the actual installation process, and my phone doesn't handle video very well, so this is going to be more of a rough guide and information compendium rather than a full installation series like my others. Also, due to the amount of information present, I'm going to break it down into three separate videos. The first video, this one, will be for answering general questions about the HXC floppy drive emulator. The second video will be about the installation of the emulator itself. And finally, the third video will be about setting up the emulator software and creating disk images for it. So, questions about the emulator. Is it really fully compatible with the Insonic Mirage? I'm happy to say that yes. From what I've seen, the HXC floppy drive emulator is fully compatible with the sampler. Is it really a drop-in replacement for the original floppy drive? Yes, with one caveat. I will go into more detail regarding this in the installation video, but in my DMS-8 rack mount version, the floppy drive ribbon cable and power cable had to be connected upside down on the emulator itself to match the pin layout of the original floppy drive. Where can I buy it? The main website for the emulator is hxc2001.com. I have included a link to the site in the video description below. They are available from the Lotharex store and eBay pages, which I've also linked. What about the different revisions? Currently, there are several versions available to buyers. I would recommend Revision F, which comes in a metal case with a front-facing screen and is a decent fit for the Mirage. But, if you have a keyboard version and are comfortable modifying the case, you could opt for Revision C and install the screen next to the pitch and modulation wheels. Whichever revision fits your case, style, and budget. What's the difference between the USB and SD card versions? To my knowledge, the installation process for the two is the same, but it is there that the similarities end. The USB version lacks the screen and built-in interface buttons used to operate the SD card version. Instead, the USB version requires a connection to a personal computer in order to feed data to it. More importantly, the USB version is a read-only device, meaning that you cannot save disk images directly from the Mirage using its save sound commands. This may be fine if you plan on loading disk images only and not saving any modified parameters, but if you think you'll ever need to save a sound or parameter change, you'll need the SD card version. How much do they cost? I paid about $115 US for my Revision F SD card model at a time when the dollar was strong against the British pound. You could expect to pay about $80 for the Revision C SD card model. However, these prices are likely to change depending on availability, hardware version, and currency exchange rates. The USB versions tend to be a bit cheaper, but you lose the ability to write and save data. What about cheaper models like those from GoTech or other companies? From what I've seen in other videos, the GoTech models do boot the sampler, though I can't vouch for their installation or operation. It also seems that they operate in a manner similar to the USB versions of the Lotharec drives. They also have a very basic interface with only a simple LCD display, an access LED, and two buttons, whereas the HXC product has a multi-character LCD screen that displays the name of your disk images. Due to their low cost, I also suspect that their build quality might be a little subpar, but this may not bother you when installing it into a 30-year-old budget sampler. I also cannot speak for any software they may need to run or support from the manufacturer. What kind of technical know-how will I need to install it? Familiarity with simple tools will help. You'll also need to know how to open your Mirage and remove the floppy drive and screw in the emulator, as well as installing a couple cables. In the worst case, you may need to check the output pins of the power supply cable with a multimeter to determine the proper orientation for it. If you are not comfortable with opening up what is essentially a vintage computer and messing around with the internals, you might want to have someone more tech-savvy do it for you. Where can I get disk images? There are a few floating around the internet in .edm format, which can be easily converted to the .hfe files used by the emulator. Unfortunately, I can't list exactly where you can find these due to legal reasons, but they're easily located with a quick search.
There are also currently auctions on eBay for CDs and SD cards that come preloaded with sounds for the emulator in the correct format, though personally I prefer creating my own disc images. While it's a bit of a time consuming process, it makes sense if you already have an extensive library of discs like I do with your own custom sounds on them, but that's a task for another video. I hope you found this helpful. While much of the information presented is from my own experience, a lot of it also came from the amazing DIY blog, which I've linked below. If you'd like to see my installation series of the Octophonic output mod for the Mirage, click here. And if you'd like to hear some of the music from my latest album, click here. Otherwise, stay tuned for part two, where I detail the installation process of the emulator itself. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.